Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to the correct views. Sam I be the Ganji during political commentary for the Media Speaks. Friends, it is time for the Dunks Cap of the Month Award Show. But not only that, it's also time for you guys to pick the Dunks Cap of the Year. I don't have your whole prize package put together yet. I do know you're getting one of these fine stickers, but I don't know what else you're getting. You're definitely getting a passing time CD, you're getting a sticker, I'll have the whole prize package together. Suffice to say, you're going to want to enter this, okay? So go ahead, get your pen handy, here's what you have to choose from. You've got Sean Penn, who got El Chapo busted by bragging about how he interviewed El Chapo. You've got Gawker, who blaming Johnson for the Trump win. You've got Gary Johnson for saying that the emails from Hillary Clinton, as you can see in my shirt, were not criminal. I don't really want to send the dump cap to Gary Johnson, though. Try not to make me do that. It just hurts. He's fallen so badly. Um, the, uh, oh yes, of course, the, uh, the illegal problem, which was uh, hollered by... Uh, the Rammy. We've got five Tappan Z High who banned the producers. You've got uh, Mark Dayton for saying that Beyonce, of course the governor, saying that Beyonce was a role model. You've got Tumble Regional High School who has, uh, excuse me, Tumble Regional Hospital, excuse me. Remember the gentleman who had to go to the hospital with a gun uh, to save his baby's life because they wanted to pull the plug, and of course we know the baby lived. The hospital arrested him anyway. That's a good one. Uh, U.S. Customs Border Protection, of course, with the uh, the uh, raping of a woman. Literally, they, they kept her for six hours. They had just subjected her to radiation, anal probes, enemas, you name it, all against her will. Uh, Mark Turner, State Department, uh, for the saying that, you know, a little bit of terrorism would not necessarily make one a terrorist organization. It's true. It's true. You've got the, the $475,000 growth that the taxpayers got to pay for. You've got Harry Reid saying that uh, Trump was actually helped. That is right. Helped by CNN, who did nothing but slander him. Which one do you think is the dumbest? You choose, uh, put it in the comment line of this video, and they will get the dunce cap of the year. They will get a certificate, and you, I'm going to pick a winner. I will pick them randomly like I always do, and I will get that prize package underway. So uh, there you go. Friends, we're moving into the actual story itself as Cristal, the behind-the-scenes queen, uh, comes out from the shadows, as it were, and designs our Christmas tree. This is brought to you by The Day the Lights Went Out. You can find it on Amazon Kindle. It's by D. Allen Ross, A-L-L-A-N. Uh, sh show sponsor is sponsoring the Dunce Cap of the Month. Shout out to him. Hilariously funny book, by the way. Those of you on screen share on low def can see it. High def are like, oh, you better go look up D. Allen Ross. You'll find out what I'm talking about. You'll love it. Um, Breitbart, Texas high school students perform Trump assassination. Now, I understand it was a skit, and I don't particularly have a problem with it above and beyond two things. First of all, they are talking about seriously trying to assassinate Trump. Second of all, do you think it would have been okay if it had been done to Obama? Or would it have been called racist? Would it have just been called humor then? So that's my problem with it. I'm not against all forms of satire. Uh, Jaws of Victory, a band I was in, we electrocuted Bill Clinton on stage in an electric chair. So I don't have a problem with it as long as you're not hypocritical with it. But it still does win the dunce cap uh, mention anyway, friends. Two Texas high school students face disciplinary action after staging a mock assassination of President-elect Trump for their English class presentation. San Antonio Express News reported that two 10th grade male students performed a skit entitled The Assassination of Donald Trump last week at John Marshall High School. As part of the performance, one of the boys made a gunfire sound effect with his cell phone while the other boy, portraying the president-elect, fell to the ground, pretending to be dead. 
Uh, supposedly, the uh, they did not know that the kids were going to do this. It was supposed to be another play, and they changed it at the last minute. Uh, the parents of the student in the English class were outraged by what took place and were not sure that the matter would handle, was handled appropriately. It, it's very interesting that appropriately would be brought up on a, on a play where you're uh, pretending to kill the President of the United States. Honestly, I have run out of words to describe how angry I am and how shocked I am that she's still in school today. Oh my God, Christelle just blew out a very expensive behind-the-scenes light. So friends, if you would like to donate at correctviewsofhotmail.com to buy a new light, you can see that it went out in the line of duty. Last year, Bright Boy Texas reported on the budding fourth grade magician accused of terrorizing his students because he said he would make them disappear with a Lord of the Rings pretend ring. So of course that means the end of the world if you if you break out the deadly Harry Potter here. But if you threaten to kill the President of the United States, oh my god, she didn't blow it up. That's amazing. And then suddenly everything is okay and perfectly fine. Does that make sense to you? No, me either. Uh, moving onward here, this is about the death of Fidel Castro. He dies at the age of 90. And uh, Colin Kirk, here's what Colin Kaepernick thinks about him. The 49ers player speaks out on former communist leader of Cuba thinks he was a good guy. Now this is the guy that disrespects the soldiers by taking a knee every single time that he is, um, every time that he, he is a football game. He refuses to, to stand up and be acknowledged and honor the history of the flag. Instead he takes a knee because he believes that, you know, people are so hurt and destroyed by who he is, you guys should be able to hear better now, uh, that, that he's been so held back in his life. Never mind the fact that if people were so racially against him, then he wouldn't have one of the most sought after jobs in the entire country. He has gone there by the level of his own skill, not his color, and that's the same way that everyone makes it in this world. And a lot of times, your skill and the hard work isn't noticed even if you're the very best. So he should consider himself lucky. But no, he knows it. Instead, he praises a butcher. The, there, are, there are few world leaders who bring more mixed emotions to mind than Fidel Castro. The former leader of Communist Cuba has been equally praised as a liberator and condemned as a mass murderer. Yeah, he liberated you already. He destroyed your once vibrant country and slaughtered people in the thousands. Some Cubans were saddened by Castro's death. Others, others had conflicting emotions. As History.com will tell you, Castro first rose to power after overthrowing the military dictatorship of Flagencio Batista in 1959. Of course, we know the history from there. Um... He had a rocky relationship with the U.S. And I think it's interesting that a lot of the people on the left praised him because he was a thorn in the side of the U.S. He was a thorn. He didn't stand up to us in some great, brave way. He almost started a third world war with the Cuban Missile Crisis disaster, is what he did. And he sided with the communist Russians who were absolutely butchering and slaughtering their own people and holding them in communist dictatorship uh, grips. And yet, nothing. He's praised as some great leader. That's because secretly the people on the left despise this country. They literally hate it. They shouldn't even be here. And that is why they praise everybody that's against us, even if what they do is absolutely dreadful. Unless, of course, that person's Vladimir Putin. And again, we've gone over her. I don't think he's the greatest man either. Castro's cause of death is unclear, though Heavy.com noted that his health has been in decline for about eight years. His brother Raul will rule Cuba in Fidel's absence. But uh, Kaepernick made uh, sounds familiar. It should. The state, the star, excuse me, athlete.